maybe I've not explained real good, is the minute you are saved, the minute you have asked Christ to come into your heart, the Holy Spirit takes up residence there. By you asking Christ to come in, you are allowing the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and into your life. And by doing so, there are benefits that come along, spiritual benefits that come along when we ask Jesus to come into our hearts. First of all, I believe that these gifts are given from the Holy Spirit for those who desire and search for them. And I believe there is a purpose for these gifts for us to use today. I don't see anywhere in the Bible where Jesus said these gifts were for this time period and this time period only. I don't ever see Christ stopping the gifts the Holy Spirit has brought with him. In these teachings, I have asked us to look at a definition of a spiritual gift, and that is a spiritual gift is a God-given ability which enables a believer to effectively serve the body of Christ. Let me say that again. A spiritual gift is a God-given ability which enables a believer to effectively serve the body of Christ. We cannot understand every aspect of this definition. But I'm going to ask you to try, by faith, to try and understand that if we study and we search out these gifts, there's truth in God's Word. And He's written it in a way and spoken it in a way for us to understand. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11, on page 813 in your, uh, in your Bible. I like the New King James Version, so I'm going to be reading that, but the NIV doesn't do a bad job on that. I just prefer the New King James. It says here, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God caused Jesus a curse. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. Let me read that last verse again. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Let's pray. 
Father God, we thank you for your word tonight, Lord. We thank you for this teaching and for open minds and open hearts to receive your word tonight. Holy Spirit, we have asked you to come into our lives and come into our heart when we accepted Jesus as Lord. And we ask tonight, Holy Spirit, that you reign in this service, that you allow us to understand and be able to put to work God's precious and holy word. Father God, we sit here tonight with faith and an idea of expectation to what you would have us learn tonight. Father God, we give this service to you. We thank you for a place to worship. We thank you for every family represented. We just thank you for this time to be taught and to learn more about you. We ask that you be with us this evening. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. So far in these series, we have spoken about words of wisdom, words of knowledge, faith, gifts of healings. And tonight we're going to try and get through the next two of these gifts, which are the working of miracles and the gift of prophecy. In my opinion, these are pretty heavy duty gifts, guys. But as we just read, the same Spirit gives to each as God wills. For what? For building the church as we know it and see it. When we see these words, build, the church. That doesn't necessarily mean this building. Because you who come are the church. Christ in you is the church. And sometimes we need to see a little something special to renew that faith and excite us about what He is doing. Today, sitting at Lowe's, behind a computer, talking to a young man about low-E gas in the windows. Doesn't sound exciting, does it? But to hear him turn and look at me and say, you must be a pastor or something, because I can just feel that coming from you. I didn't say a word to him, guys. But he felt. You know what he felt? Love. Compassion. The Holy Spirit. God's word in these passages are literal. And they are meant for us to learn from. Now, we as humans do what? We distort things, don't we? I listen to a young lady yesterday tell me of a situation. And when she was finished, I looked at her and I said, now you know, as well as I do, there's two sides to every story. And I understand what you're saying. But I have also talked to the other party and I understand what they are saying. See, there's two sides, guys. We tend to distort things so we come out on top. And God's word does not let us do that. His word is truth. When man gets in the middle of God's word, we all suffer. We all suffer. Working of miracles. A definition that I liked when I read through this is it is a supernatural manifestation for the healing of sickness or diseases without any natural source or means. A supernatural manifestation of the healing of circumstances or life. How many have problems in life? 
How many of you once in a while, when you see the bills due and you're flipping through the checkbook, you need a manifestation of healing for those circumstances? Yeah? Am I alone? No. When you pull up to the gas pump and you see $4 a gallon for gas and you're on E and you got $20 in your pocket, you need a healing for the circumstances you are looking at. Kristen just the other week was out of insurance and needed to buy insurance for her car and bills were due and, and she was, oh me, oh my dad, what am I going to do? I said, we're going to pray. Two days later, a check showed up in the mail. For more than she needed to pay her bills. A supernatural manifestation without any natural source or means. Drug companies all the time make placebos, sugar pills, along with the drug they're trying to market. And they have test people try these out. And some people get well on these sugar pills. A supernatural manifestation of God's goodness. All the times when I've heard teachings on working of miracles, it has always been associated with health issues. And my question when I started reading this is, why are there gifts of healings and then gifts of working of miracles. I thought they were the same. They're not, guys. A miracle is something that happens when we've exhausted all natural means. When we've taken as many aspirins as we can take and that headache doesn't go away. And we bend over and pray and God removes it like that. That is a miracle. We need to understand these things. Mark chapter 1, verses 22 through 31 tells us this. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were so amazed that they asked each other, what is this? A new <laughs> teaching? And with, a, with authority. He even gives orders to the evil spirits. And they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. See guys, the evil spirit and the man shook him violently, came out of him with a shriek. The people were so amazed that they asked each other, what about the teaching? Remember that verse started? And it said that they were so amazed with his teaching that he taught with authority. He taught them of things of God not of things of law. They forgot about that when this whole episode happened, didn't they? And they began to gossip and talk about all these things that they had seen happen. It caused confusion in that church, in that place where Jesus was teaching. And that's what Satan does. When things get to going good and people start getting close to God, He shakes them up and causes confusion, causes doubt, causes their faith to dwindle. 
and we buckle. We buckle under the pressure of the world around us. And instead of saying, I am more than a conqueror by Christ who strengthens me, we forget saying, I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, the Apostle Paul called me. I am a disciple of the Most High and Holy God. I am a brother to Jesus Christ, my Lord. We forget those things. And we start kicking the stones, looking at the ground, saying, oh me, oh my, what problems I have. We all do it. I do it some days. Working of miracles. Could a miracle be when we're down and out and we finally give up and fall to our knees and ask Christ to forgive us and bring us back into his fold. And he does, because his word says he does. Guys, that's a miracle. That is the Holy Spirit alive in your heart and pulling you back to a time of reuniting and a time of excitement. We can't let life, we can't let Satan get us so focused that we lose sight as to why we're here. Gifts of prophecy. In my opinion, a definition is also required. And the gift of prophecy edifies, exhorts, and comforts. Prophecy will help us, will build us up, will strengthen us, and should always lead us to the Word of God. Always lead you to the Word of God. It is the ministry of the Holy Spirit to convict of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment to come. John Chapter 16, verses 8 through 13 tells us this. Now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you ask me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me in regards to righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment because the Prince of the world now stands condemned. Satan has been defeated, guys. If you know Christ, you have the right to say to him, no way, get behind me. No way. Jesus spoke to that nasty demon and said, come out. And he had to obey, didn't he? We have that same power. I have much more to say to you. More than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is to come. Word of prophecy. I was in a service one night and this fella came up to me. Stan Leverett. He's no longer with us. He passed away. 
And he said, Brother Dan, I have a word for you. You need to hear this word. I, you got to hear this word. And you know what I told him? I said, Stan, no offense, but you go to the pastor of this church and two other elders, and you share with them what you feel you need to share with me first. And if they feel it is edifying, exhorting, and or comforting, and leads to me the word of God, I'll listen to you. But if you're just going to jabber, I don't want to hear it. What happens, guys? Man gets in the middle of God's business, doesn't he? And they distort it. They confuse it. They get people all mixed up. And you know what he told me? I don't have time to do that. I said, then I don't have time to listen. I'm sorry. We need to be careful. There's people running all over calling themselves prophets, calling themselves prophecy people. And we need to judge what they say. If it does not edify, exhort, or comfort, or always lead to God's Word, man's got it messed up. They're treading in waters they shouldn't be. And I've been known to call people out on that. Because I don't want my family listening to stuff that does not line up with God's holy word. He has said so much in this Bible. Shame on us if we add to it or take away from it. We get ourselves in business we have no place to be in. And all it does is cause confusion and hurt to those who hear it. My wife was eight months pregnant with our first daughter was having a terrible time. And we were invited to this revival center. And this man came up to my wife who had been run over by a semi-truck in a Volkswagen bug. He had a tooth infection. They couldn't pull his tooth because all the wire that they had reconstructed his face with was tied to this tooth. He had one ear missing. His nose was sideways, and, and he was quite a sight. <laughs> and he walked up to my wife, and he said, Honey, he put his hands on her belly. He said, You have a female doctor, and what she has told you about your child is not going to happen. Your child will be born perfect, whole. And you will come through the Caesarean just fine. For seven months, we have been told how deformed our daughter would be. We had attended several genetic counseling classes. We had been to doctors who asked if we wished to even have her born into this world. And I went up to this fella, and I put my finger right in his slanted nose, and I said, I'm going to tell you something, buddy. If this does not come to be what you just spoke, you are a false prophet, and I don't care what it costs, I'll take a whole page ad out in the Bryan Times and print that you are a false prophet. You don't speak that stuff. He smiled at me. You know what he said? I was supposed to go back to Texas, but I'm staying till that baby's born. And the day they took her into the hospital, he was in the waiting room. Wasn't he? And when they took Tristan out of Debbie, she was perfect. 
She didn't have the open hole in her back like we were told. She didn't have the fluid on her brain like we were told. She had five fingers and five toes, or ten fingers and ten toes and was perfect. Nurses were bawling. Doctors were telling me, get out of my way. I got to get out of here. I can't believe this has happened. The neonatal ward going to Toledo Hospital and had this big aquarium, it looked like, full of gel that they were supposed to pull her out and submerge her in this gel and take her to the hospital. None of that was needed. She was perfect. And I went right downstairs and apologized to this man. He had faith to believe that I didn't. And his faith, I believe to this day, healed my unborn daughter. Because I didn't have that much faith. Everything he said, guys, edified, exhorted us, and comforted us in what we had been taught. The words people share should be and always must be comforting. Christ, to my knowledge, only lost his temple. Temple, temper, was when they were doing business in the church. Prior to that, he showed compassion even to his last breath on the cross, where he said, Father, forgive them all, for they know not what they do. We can't always lean on our own understandings. Because if we did, guys, we'd get it wrong. None of us think like God thinks. Thank goodness, amen. If someone says they're a prophet, judge what they say. Listen to the words they speak. We have the Holy Spirit right here that Christ sent us in His Word. And He will listen and help us hear what we need to hear. Our Heavenly Father is not a little weakling. He's powerful and He's mighty and He loves each and every one of us who also in turn love Him. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we thank You, Lord, tonight. We thank You for these teachings of miracles and prophecy, Father God. I pray, Lord, that our eyes will be open and our ears will be quick to hear things that perhaps don't line up with your word, Father God. And you'll allow us to be able to remove ourselves from situations that could cause us to stumble. Father God, we're, we're into some meat here. And I thank you for those who have come out to listen. Father God, again, we pray for each and every household in this community. We thank you for this church, for its leadership, and for those who come out faithfully. Father God, we just give you this time. We ask that you keep us safe this week and for the big holiday tomorrow and the long weekend for folks. Father God, we just pray that safety be around them in everything they do. Lord, protect us and keep us until we can meet again. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And amen. Folks, you are just this. Thank you so much.